Hello and welcome to another episode of uh, Saved by Grace. Today we have uh, two special guests here with us. Um, we have here Dr. Um, Steve Hunt and uh, Tim. Uh, and today we're going to talk about um, our um, our journey through um, being born again, um, what how our life was before and after we were born again. So uh, we're going to start with. Uh, uh, Dr. Steve here. Um, so, Dr. Steve, um, how long have you been saved? Well, I made my public confession when I was five years old in church. Five years old, wow. <laughs> so, it's, it's been a lifetime. Uh, I am uh, the oldest great grandchild uh, in a line of ministers. Wow. So, okay. That, that was kind of the background. Okay. And, uh, Tim? Since about nine, uh, 1990. 1990. And how old were you then? Mid 20s. Okay. So, uh, what brought you to the Lord? Well, just Christian uh, people that kept coming to me and talking about the Bible and stuff. And I knew my my life needed to take a change. And I accepted the Lord through it. And He's been working on me and working with me uh, ever since. Okay, so uh, uh, what kind of struggles did you have before you were a Christian? Uh, just the usual, the usual, uh, the searching, not knowing what I, really what I was searching for. Right. Okay. And uh, how about you, Doctor? Hmm. What was the question now? Yours. You uh, gave your life to, to Christ at five. Yes. Well, so at five years old, you actually knew what you were doing, huh? Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay, well, that's that's such a blessing that um, you have a family that's, uh, that's all Christians. Yeah, um, for, um, for some of us, we, we, we don't have that, so we were kind of like going through the world, kind of searching for the truth. Well, it was... Uh... Like this, the uh, pastor made an invitation, said if you haven't made a public confession, you need to make a public confession. So uh, I made my public confession and raised my hand, or, you know, on the altar call. And then the next week, uh, I raised my hand again, and the next week I raised my hand again. And uh, so the pastor asked my mom to find out what was going on. I said, well, I haven't been perfected yet. Well. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. But uh, I made a dedication to do power ministry. We had met uh, different people uh, who were powerful evangelists that came to one of the churches I was in. One of them, uh, he was uh, blind in one eye, mm -hmm. and he would uh, remove his fake eye, cover his good eye, and he could still see. Okay. <laughs> and he had been... Uh, healed in an A.A. A. Allen ministry uh, in an odd way because he went up as a child and the uh, pastor asked him, uh, son, what can I do for you? He said, well, I can't see out of this side. Uh, so the past, the evangelist didn't know that he had a fake eye. Oh, wow. And so he uh, had uh, commanded that he see as well out of the uh, uh, side where he couldn't see. Mm -hmm. As with his good eye. Wow. And uh, then he's telling mom, 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 I can see, I can see. No, that's impossible. No, that's impossible. And he finally stood in the, the uh, testimony line. So these were people that I met. Another one could tell you the numbers uh, on the cards in your wallet with <laughs> having seen it, you could call it out. You over there. Mm -hmm. uh, you have such a card it's this color and i'm not going to give all the numbers i'll just give some of them so okay. <laughs> but i met people like that yeah. and so i said lord i i think that that's what i want to do well the lord said it wouldn't happen uh he told me that uh it would begin in the year 2000. okay so in the year 2000 i found myself working at tbn and i was working on the prayer lines and uh, uh, when the prayer lines were going, you only had time to pick up the phone. You could only talk so right, many minutes right. before uh, the next, and it would just ring constantly. Yeah. 
But then there were times when they didn't have the number on the air and we were still there uh, on the, and we were getting paid to, you know, man those uh, phones. So uh, during that downtime, we'd be reading the Bible. And of course, I didn't want to say anything that would uh, cause a person to lose their faith. So I said, Lord, don't let it be me talking on those phones. Let it be you. And so the Lord began manifesting okay. uh, and speaking through me and people to ask for a word and the Lord would cut in and, and okay. there we go. Yes, yes, wonderful. Uh, so one day, September 17th, 1999, I was reading that, oh, there's got to be more than 12 apostles because why would you, why would the Lord be admonishing a, uh, an angel of a church uh, I'm pleased that you test the apostles and find out who's real and who's not. And I said, well, if there's only 12, then everybody knows who they are. So you don't have to test them. And I'm looking down, I see, oh, yeah, there's these Greeks out there, and, and they're doing the work uh, also. And uh, so, and the Lord sent 70 out and anointed them uh with the power to even raise the dead. So I said, well, with that, I just asked an innocent question. Lord, how does one become the real thing today, not anointed and appointed by man, but the real McCoy? Okay. And uh, I got out into the break room uh, after saying that, sp speaking that with the Lord, and, and uh, I heard the Lord speak to me. He says, I've anointed your head with oil. I've washed your feet. Now go feed my sheep. Okay. <laughs> and he said, first thing you're anointed to do is to call my blessings and my presence. Mm -hmm. And he said, uh, and talked for a moment, he said, begin by blessing all the pastors who've helped you through your trials and tribulations. So that began my journey <laughs> in that area of uh, ministry. So you've seen a lot of supernatural miracles happening, correct? Oh, yes. Things. Um, one day, uh, I was doing ministry with some of my people at their house, and we'd done, we'd been there three days, clothing, food ministry. Uh, we'd done uh, deliverance, counseling, and uh, Bible study more heavy-duty deliverance. Uh, one pastor gave us a, a couple people that they couldn't work with, uh, and uh, I was told to go outside, walk around for a moment. When I came back in, I saw something that needed to be done, and this woman was delivered of seven orbs, and all of a sudden, the atmosphere in the room changed dramatically. And... Uh, so about 10 o'clock after Bible study was over, they'd left. Um, we said, Let, let's have something to eat. And I wasn't really hungry because the spirit was feeding me. And uh, so, but the Lord said, go along with it. All right. So I went along with it. And then what happened was um, they put, five little tiny taco tortillas on a serving plate in front of me. And then they had another serving plate that had two teaspoons full of refried beans. And that's all I saw on the table. And I'm looking to see if I could see what's in their fridge because, and I'm saying, God, no, not right, not right. <laughs> we did food ministry. I told them, right. even according to your word, if we do food ministry, we will never lack for food. No, 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 no. Right. <laughs> and they said, uh, Steve, would you say the blessing? <laughs> and I, all I, look, that's all I'm seeing is five tortillas and then two teas. And no, 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 no. And, and they said uh, several times, they, they said, uh, Steve, would you say the blessing? Finally, I said, okay. And I said, Father, bless these meager fixings and multiply it back to them. And okay. I figured I'm going to have two tortillas with uh, two teaspoons of refried beans and that call it a night, right? right, right. And uh, so 
I finished the second tortilla with the beans on it, and they said, oh, Steve, we want you to eat up. There's some fixings on the table. Oh, okay, so there were some bowls there, and I looked, sure enough, in the bottom of the bowl, there was a little bit of, you know, lettuce, mm -hmm. tomatoes, mm -hmm. onions, but not much, not mm -hmm. enough to feed three right. people, right. and uh, I'm thinking, oh, okay, so I had one because they insisted, and uh, okay, uh, and I turn around, and I say, no, no, Steve, we want you to eat up mm -hmm. now. In my house, there's an unwritten rule where I was raised. You never eat the last bit because there's always going to be somebody that says, who ate the last? And so you leave it there until it turns green yes. <laughs> or something. Yes. Anyway, what happened was we got to um, talk tortilla number four. And I figured there's one tortilla left. I'm not going to eat it. I turn around and there's two tortillas. Well, now my appetite stirred up a little bit, you know, uh, and so I had another taco. But this one, the, the tortilla was fresh made, like it had just been cooked. Wow. Except the wife was at the far end of the table and uh, my pastor uh, was that I ordained right next to me, okay? And, all right, uh, I didn't see her get up, and I'm wondering, how did she do that? Okay. <laughs> but I ate it, it was delicious, and I turned around figuring, okay, no more. And again, there's two. Wow. And, and this kept going on for a while, because, uh, you know, I, I'm a big man. Right. <laughs> when my appetite starts going, I, I start eating. And uh, finally, I got to a point, I said, okay, no more, if I have any more, I'm gonna blow it out. So I looked up to my friend to tell him that was the last one. And as I looked, he was staring at the tortilla plate with this expression. And then I looked across at his wife on the far end of the, she had the same expression. So I said, uh, you haven't been putting any tortillas on that plate, uh -huh. have you? And he looks at me and he says, no. <laughs> so what you're saying is that these, these tortillas, it kept multiplying. And they were watching them appear on the plate, and I oh, was wow. eating them. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that's really... And that's, so... That's amazing. <laughs> I, people wonder how we're going to make it in the last days. Remember, God can still feed the multitudes. Yes. Wow. And that, that was a real... And you can call them. You can talk. Husband and wife, they will tell you, yes, it happened. Yes. Well, I, I do believe that every single one of us have experienced some kind of miracle um, or another. That's why we believe in what we believe in. And um, a lot of that miracle, I believe, is, um, is the changing of the heart. Um, a lot of the individuals um, that uh, you and I have most likely prayed for have been healed but um, they haven't, their heart hasn't changed, you know, their, their, their heart situation hasn't really changed. So I, I think the heart is like the hardest thing to change. And so when God gets a hold of your heart and changes it, it's just, um, it's just something that, that, that just happens. And, and, and we just, uh, you know, our heart is just connected to God, you know, not just, um, the miracles are just a bonus, right? But um, like I've experienced so many miracles and, and for me, um, God, God made me in such a way where I'm so grateful and thankful. So I remember every single detail of every miracle that he's done in my life. So that causes my faith to strengthen. So, um, Tim, tell me about, um, do you have any healings that God has done for you? I have one that took place just a little over a month ago. Uh, Dr. Bruno saw that I was walking with a cane and asked me what was wrong with my legs and I told him I said there's nothing wrong with my legs it's my spine mm. I have what they call de uh, degenerative discs and he touched me prayed over me and I've been walking without the cane since amen amen so so just just recently huh yes okay wow okay well um 
we just want to share with the viewers out there that um, if, if, if you don't know Jesus, um, it, it's, um, it's, uh, there's a reason why you're watching this show. So um, we're sharing with you our experiences with, uh, with, with God and how God has, has, has not only changed our heart, but changed our lives and blessed us in infinite ways. And so um, if, if those of you out there who are like, if you're sick of any kind of uh, sickness that you have, um, I myself had many addictions that, that God has taken away. So, um, you know, God, God is in the business of doing miracles. So when the doctor says that, um, that, that, that there's no way, and then I'm here to tell you that, that God has a way. And God can, can heal you. Just, um, just cry out to him and um, just connect with those men and women of God that, that God is using. So, um, it, it's, you know, what we believe in is not, is not religion. But it's just this true relationship that we have with our Lord Jesus. So, um, um, so the the length of time, because I I know of a lot of um, people that that gave their life to Jesus at a very young age, and then um, they didn't really understand the commitment until they were older. So, um, so did you have any kind of backsliding or? Um, well. Um... You know, I, I went through periods of time when uh, I was away from the church for uh, years. I still had my walk with the Lord, still talked with the Lord, but sometimes I didn't do everything I should be doing the right way, and the Lord drew me back. Okay. He, uh, you know, it's like uh, I would say to somebody, I said, uh, he's got me on one of those rubber leashes. And I'm only going to be able to go so far, and then yeah. <laughs> I'm going to be back. But uh, the um, the thing that he's done is he's able to restore, and he's able to change. Now, I was a very stressful person, always uh, afraid of being in front of people. And I had worked many years to develop a voice and very intense, got to be the best I can possibly be. And uh, the Lord finally, after years, calmed me down. I unstressed. I began to be able to relate with people better. Yeah. And uh, he changed my heart. That's right. And uh, so that... Uh, was very important and he's spared my life many a time not only well Charles it, who walked in the studio here he's been with me he was my night supervisor when I worked over at TBN okay and uh, he's been on the road with me and watched cars veer out and try to come towards us yeah. uh, and I've had my experience with that where the Lord has really spared my life many a time and I've uh, had other problems uh, physically where the Lord restored me. And yes. so, yes, uh, it's, it's been a walk. Yeah. And the thing is, um, sometimes you just have to pray, okay, Lord, guide me every step of the way. And let only that which is of you come forth and I try to dedicate a day when when I get up in the morning I say Lord I dedicate this day to you and use me whatever way you want and I remember I did that one day and it was a Sunday and he said uh, go to the TBN broadcast uh, network out in Costa Mesa and I went out there and he said somebody I have somebody who has some questions you have the answers well okay the Lord said I already had the answers so I didn't have to ask him what the question was going okay. to be got just wait till the guy got there well I went down there and unbeknownst to me it, it was the pastor's birthday so everybody was at another location and nobody was there were three people at the studio and uh, I'm waiting around there waiting finally I said Lord okay I must have heard you wrong uh, but here's what I'm going to do. I'm walking towards the door leading out to the parking lot. And uh, I'm going to, when I get to that door, I'm going to head to my car and find a church. 
unless somebody stops me. Well, I got to the door and somebody walked up. He said, are you so-and-so the singing evangelist? I said, well, I'm not that person, but I am a singing evangelist. And he looked at me and he said, I was driving my truck down the freeway and I saw this building dressed up like a birthday cake to Jesus. <laughs> and uh, he said, uh, and I had some questions of the Lord and he told me if I would park my truck and come over here, there was somebody with the answers to my questions. Mm -hmm. I said, oh, you're the one. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's right. And so God is um God is always doing miracles um I mean if we, if we talk about miracles we can just write books upon books upon books I mean that's why when Christians get together we always share all the things that God has done in, in our lives and it seems like when we start talking it just never ends it never ends because we just have so many stories so um for for those of you out there who um who maybe just became a Christian and um. Uh, you're not sure how to walk with the Lord. You know, I suggest to you that um, if you just um, connect to a church that um, that just you, you just feel like like um, that God is there. You just when you go into that church and you um, during during worship and you feel the presence of God and and there are leadership there that 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 you feel like can can help you. Um, just just uh, connect with them, and that way um, you can walk with the Lord. Um, you know, much easier because during this time, um, you know, we, we know it's the, the last days. And so there's a lot of uh, temptations. There's so much things out there that if you don't know and you don't guard yourself, then you can easily fall back into the world. So um, just connecting with other believers. Uh, um, God is, uh, is not a, a God who, um, who is a control freak, but he just, you know, he just wants your heart. He, he wants you to um, to really commit to him because he knows that the things out here in this world, all it's going to do is hurt you and pull you away from him. So um, connect with other believers that, that are strong in the faith and to help you walk with God. Okay, so, um, and, uh, and if there are, are those of you out there who are just kind of falling away, you know, the Bible says that really there, there's really nothing that you can do that, 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 you know, once you're saved, once you're saved, you are saved. But um, you, you, you really have to repent and, and walk with God, just like the children, just like the Israelites. You know, once they crossed the, 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 the Red Sea, they were no longer slaves. But now they have to put their trust in God, you know, put their faith in God for him to, 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 to feed them, to, to, to just shelter them and all that. So, um, and, and, and there's rules, right? There's rules. You know, Moses had rules to keep them, you know, in line and everything. So um, I know when I became a Christian, uh, there were things that, that I no longer um, wanted to do and, and shouldn't do. And, and my walk was different. Because we are a new creation in Christ Jesus. So um, there has to be a newness. And so that's when you know that, that, that you are for God. It's, it's you know, we're, we're the bride of Christ. So we're married to Jesus, no longer part of the world, no longer doing the things that we once did. So um, just, just connect to other believers and really um, focus on, on, on loving Jesus because he's done it all for us. And so once we love him, then we're going to like, uh, reap the, the blessings that he has for us. So I encourage you guys to really, in these last days, just really stay close to the Holy Spirit, you know, and, and really, um, you know, take your, your, your walk, your commitment with God, you know, seriously, because there's a lot of things out there that just, you know, absolutely can pull you away. And, and the fact of the matter is, Satan doesn't come as himself. You know, he comes with things that he knows that your heart desires. So be very careful. And so, um, um, you know, it seems like uh, Dr. Um, <clears throat> Dr. Steve here, um, you guys are uh, pretty uh, straight and narrow guys. <laughs> uh, Tim, do you want to share where you came from? <laughs> Tim, please share where you came from, Tim. I mean, we, we, we're here, we're gonna open up because there's a lot of viewers out there that, you know, that want to know and uh you know well originally i was uh from a lutheran church okay. and during my youth i walked away from it when i was 18. okay decided that uh, there was just too much man-made doctrine involved and i wanted to hear god's word and uh, from there i just 
make my make my mistakes and stuff but a pastor friend of that i met his name is aaron lofton he helped straighten me out and he introduced me to steve here and steve is i'm working with steve in his ministry and he's training me up to be a pastor okay well tim share share with the viewers what kind of mistakes you made because i i know there's there's a lot of individuals out there such as myself before i was a christian that i thought that you know before i i became a christian that i need to be better or whatnot but i believe that you know god says come as you are because he's not going to leave you where you're at and he's going to change you right so there's a lot of viewers out there that um that 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 don't know god and maybe they're so condemned you know and and uh, so they, they want to know who we were and who we are today. Well, I guess who I was uh, wasn't really me. I kind of went away from what I, everything I believed. And yeah. I ended up doing some time in prison for doing armed robberies. And wow. That was something that I basically got talked into doing and mm -hmm. knew better, but at the time didn't care. And the Lord just pulled me out of that. and where I'm at now yeah so there's nothing you can really do that God can't forgive you but the thing is whatever that you do do in this world you um, you know there's you know there's prices you pay you know so um, but you know it, it's such a, um, a blessing to know that no matter where you're at where um, what you did that if you if you come to Jesus and ask for forgiveness and repent of all your sin do a u-turn that God will love on you, will will bless you and forgive you and, and, and make you brand new. Um, so um, for those out you are out there who who want to receive that gift, the gift of salvation, um, um, Dr. Um, Steve, can you uh, pray for them please? Father, I I uh, often have said this, I don't like talking to deaf and blind people, so I ask the Holy Spirit to touch anyone that would open their eyes and their ears to the truth and prepare their minds for the word and anoint the word father we know that each one of us have had struggles in this life and that you've made an, a way and a pathway to reunite us with you yourself you took us through that time and you actually sent your son to pay the price for us so that we could be reunited with you, everyone who would. So, Father, I speak to everyone who would like to know the Father, the Heavenly Father. I ask, Lord, that you open their eyes right now. And Father, come into our lives. Come into our lives. Jesus, set us free. Ilam Set us free, set us free, set us free. Amen. That we may be a beautiful person. That we may be able to honor you and be an honor in our families as well. Lord, that our lives would be exemplary and that those that are around us would see us as a repairer of the breach. Lord, let us reach out to others as well, Lord, that we may be a good witness to them. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. Well, thank you, everyone, for joining us. We are live every Wednesday at 7 o'clock, so um, please join us next time, and we look forward to um, to uh, share with you uh, um, about our life uh, saved by grace and um and, and please, uh, if you will want to come on the show, just inbox me, and uh, we'll set it up. Thank you. God bless. Amen. Amen. Uh, just be ready. We are going to have the next show, Love the Unloved with Evangelist Angela, and together with Apostle Gail, it's very powerful man, and you need to listen from him right now, okay? And just, just stay back there and enjoy the show right now in the name of Jesus.